Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at the comparator function in JavaScript. The comparator function is the function that gets passed into JavaScript's inbuilt sort function. And what it allows us to do is, it allows us to really take control of JavaScript's sort function, to do things beyond just the sorting strings in ascending order. When we pass in a comparator function, we can do things like sorting numbers in the correct order, we can sort the properties on objects, and much more. So let's get into the code. So we can start out here nice and easy by looking at the default behavior of JavaScript sort method. As you can see here, I have a array of letters, and you can see right now that they're unsorted. So in order to sort these letters, all we'd have to do is say letters.sort, and then let's assign this to a variable. We'll assign it to a constant. We'll say sorted letters equals letters.sort. And then let's log this to the console so we can see what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal, and let's run this code. And there we can see our letters are now in sorted order, A, B, C, and P at the end. Now, with letters like this, letters that are all in the same case, in this case, they're all lowercase, this works just perfectly. However, let's try something. Instead of a lowercase p here, let's make this an uppercase p. Let's save it. And now again, let's log this to the console. And check it out here. No longer is the P at the end of the array, but now it's at the beginning. So we have capital P, and then lowercase a, b, and c. So why would this be the case? Well, before we go any further, we're going to find out something very important to understanding the sort method. If we look at the MDN web docs for the sort method, we can see that the default sort order is ascending. And the way that it works is that it converts the elements in the array into strings. And then, here's the important part, it compares their sequences of UTF-16 code unit values, or their Unicode values. So in this case, the way that these letters are being sorted is that their UTF-16 character codes are gotten first, and then those are sorted in ascending order. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to use a for each loop and log out the character code for each of these values, just to help clarify our understanding of what's going on here. So let's say letters dot for each. And then we'll say for each letter, let's log out the letter dot care code at, and we'll say at zero, because each of these string elements only have one character. So the zero index will be the character itself. And actually, just to make it that much clearer, let's first log out the letter itself, and we'll give it a space, followed by its character code. So let's clear the console and log that out. And here we can see each of the elements of our array, the B, the capital P, the C, and the A, followed by the character codes which they're assigned. And now we can understand actually how this array is sorted. We can see that the P has a character code of 80, and 80 being the lowest value amongst these character codes, we could see why it would come first when we sort this array. So with this knowledge in hand, I think we're much better equipped now to understand how sorting in JavaScript works. So our next example here is where we're really going to start taking a look at the comparator function. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an array of numbers. And we're going to have a 2, a 5, a 100, and a 4. So let's start out by simply sorting, or using the sort method on the numbers array. We'll say const sorted numbers equals numbers.sort. And let's log this out to the console to see what we get. And here, where you might have thought that we would have gotten 2, 4, 5, and 100, instead you can see that we're actually getting the 100 first, and then the 2 and the 4 and the 5. And since I've already showed you that JavaScript sort method converts the elements into their character codes first, this should explain why this sorting has occurred in this way. So once again, let's go ahead and let's do a for each on the numbers array, and check out the character codes for each of these elements. So we're going to log out each of these numbers to the console, along with their character codes, so we can see what's going on here. So first we'll do the number, and then in order to use the careCodeAt method, on these numbers we're going to need to convert them into strings first, because the careCodeAt method works on strings. So we'll say careCodeAt, and again we're going to pass in a zero here, and then let's log this to the console. And again, this explains why the numbers were sorted in the way that we saw before, with the 100 being the first element in the sorted array. 
As you can see, the 1 in the number 100 has a character code of 49, which is the lowest number in the set of numbers, or the set of character codes. So now obviously what we want is we want the 100 to be at the end of the sorted array. So this is what we can do to solve this problem. Let's uncomment out our numbers.sort here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pass in a function, and this is going to be the comparator function. We're going to pass that into the sort method. So let's write this like an arrow function here. And the way that this comparator function works is it's going to take an A value and a B value. So initially that A value is going to be the 2, and the B value is going to be the 5. And this comparator function is going to do a three-way comparison. What that means is it's going to check to see whether the A value is less than, greater than, or equal to the B value. So if the A value is less than the B value, which it is here, then the A value is going to come before the B value. If the A value happens to be greater than the B value, well then the B value is going to come before the A value. For example, with these two, 100 and the 4, if this was the A value, 100, well in this case the A value is greater than the B value, so we're going to want to swap these around. We're going to want to put the B value to come before the A value, the 100 in this case. And finally, if A and B are the same, so if we had like a 2 and a 2, well, we would just leave A and B unchanged. So what we could do is we could come in here into the comparator function, and we could say if A is less than B, return negative 1, else if A is greater than B, return 1, else return 0. And here the comparator function is going to be looking for either a negative value, a positive value, or a zero. If a negative value is returned, then A will come before B. If a positive value is returned, then B will come before A. And if zero is returned, they'll just be left unchanged. So now let's console.log out sorted numbers and see what we get. So let's clear the console. And now we can see our numbers here are correctly sorted. 2, 4, 5, and 100. And what if we wanted to sort this array in reverse order? Well, what we could do is we could simply reverse these. We could say if A is greater than B, return negative 1. And if A is less than B, return positive 1. So now let's log that out to the console. And here you can see they are sorted correctly in reverse order, with 100 at the beginning of the array. But let's put that back to where it was before to produce the correct ascending order. And what you should take note of is that it's not important that these return negative 1 and positive 1, but rather that they simply returned either a negative number or a positive number or a 0. So with that in mind, we could actually shorten up this comparator function, and we could simply return the result of evaluating a minus b. And why should that work? Well, let's take a look at it. So if A starts out as being 2, the first element in the array, and then we subtract 5 from it, that's going to result in a negative value, in this case a negative 3. And as we saw before, if we get a negative value, well then A will come before B. Let's take the case where we had 100 minus 4. Well, 100 minus 4 gives us 96, which is a positive value, and as we mentioned, if we have a positive value, well that means that A is greater than B, and therefore we need to swap them so that B comes before A. So let's verify that this works. We'll log it out, and we'll see that it's sorted correctly in ascending order. And then of course to produce a descending order we could do B minus A. And log that out, and here we get the correct descending order. Now that we've seen how to use a comparator function to sort numbers, we can move on to an example where we want to sort the properties of an object. So let's get rid of all this here. And I have an array here of objects, and this array is an array of Spice Girls. Each object with the name of the Spice Girl and her age. I just made up these ages, so I doubt that they're actually these ages. But you can see that we have four objects in the array, each with a name and an age property. So let's say, first of all, that we wanted to sort this array to have age in ascending order. So here's how we can go about doing that. 
Let's take our array, Spice Girls, and let's use the sort method. And we're going to pass it a comparator function. In this case, let's pass in comparator. And we're actually going to write that function separately here. So we'll say const comparator is going to equal an arrow function. And it'll take an A and a B. And remember how we used a comparator before to sort numbers. Well, in this case, we can do something very similar. But since we have properties on an object, we're going to access them like this. We're going to say a.age minus b.age. So in other words, a would be like this 37, b would be the 30, and so on. And now let's go in console.log this to see if we've done this correctly. And here we can see that each of these Spice Girls has been sorted in ascending order by age. So 19, 20, 30, and 37. And now let's try this. Instead of simply sorting these by name, let's sort them by the length of the name, so that the shortest name will come first, and the longest name will come last. And just for some variation, because we have these names which have a length of 6, and these names which have a length of 4, instead let's put in Scary here to get a name with a length of 5. And let's see if we can sort these now by length. So really, length is just a number. So as long as we're accessing the length property on each of these names here, we should be able to use this exact same comparator function. So instead of a.age, let's say a.name.length minus b.name.length. And let's try logging that out. And here you can see that we've got baby with the length of 4, Posh with a length of 4, Scary has a length of 5, and Ginger has a length of 6. So as you can see, we got the result that we wanted. So thanks for checking out this video on the comparator function in JavaScript. Hopefully in this video you learned how you can use the comparator function to really customize your sort method and go beyond just the default ability to sort strings in ascending order. So thanks for checking out this video. If you feel like you got something out of it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.